Before we begin this assignment, it's important that you have the ability to draw peptides like the generalized peptide shown here. When you are asked to draw dihedral angles, knowing the connectivity between the atoms of the peptide backbone is essential. Once you understand how to draw the peptide, we can begin our discussion of Newman projections, which present the phi and psi angles of the chiral alpha carbon shown here in green. To understand what these 3D angles are all about, we need to visualize them in 3D space. Open the Pymol session file from assignment 1. We'll observe the dihedral angles of some alpha carbons of P53, but of course you could do this for any protein. If you still see your hydrogen bond measurements from your previous assignment, the fastest way to turn them off is to left click and hold on the right panel of measurements, release the mouse key, and now your hydrogen bond measurements have been deleted. The other way to remove your measurements is to reopen the measurement wizard and click on delete all measurements. This will permanently remove your measurements. We're now ready to practice finding an alpha carbon's dihedral angle. The first dihedral that I'd like to find is one from a beta sheet. Let's position the molecule so that we can find a beta sheet alpha carbon to find the dihedral angle of. Make sure that you're on selecting state residues and highlight any amino acid within the beta sheet. Move the cursor to the amino acid sequence and highlight two residues, one on each side of whatever amino acid that we highlighted. This will allow us to show a small tripeptide fragment of the protein because we need enough atoms to make the measurement. The tripeptide that we've highlighted is RAM. Now that we've highlighted the peptide, we actually want to hide everything in the structure except for this peptide. To do this, select the amino acids on either side of that peptide, RAM, select all the amino acids, and then hide everything. This leaves us with only the tripeptide. Remember that when we talk about dihedral angles, we're talking about the angles associated with the alpha carbon. To highlight that alpha carbon, let's change our selecting state to atoms, click on the alpha carbon that we're going to be working with, and change its color to something obvious like green. And then the last thing that we have to do is make sure that we can see the hydrogen which is connected to the alpha carbon. We're going to show sticks and then show the spheres. Now we have a complete view of our, our alpha carbon, including its hydrogen atom. All right, we're ready to find our first dihedral angle. The first angle that we're going to find is the phi angle. Remember, the phi angle can be viewed by positioning the nitrogen that's adjacent to the alpha carbon in front of the alpha carbon. So we're going to view the alpha carbon through this nitrogen. So to do that, we're simply going to grab the peptide and position it so that the nitrogen is eclipsing the alpha carbon. Do you see how the alpha carbon is directly behind the nitrogen? That gives us the view of the Newman projection of the phi angle. This may seem a little bit cluttered, so let's simplify our view a bit. I'm going to highlight the R and the M, which are kind of blocking our view a little bit, and we're going to hide the side chains. All right, this is going to simplify our view a lot. Maybe this is a little bit better for you to see. The phi angle, we can maybe see the nitrogen eclipsing the alpha carbon a little bit better now that the side chains are out of the way. Let's look at this structure and practice drawing the Newman projection from this 3D version of the Newman projection. Hopefully you can see that the backbone of the molecule makes an angle that is large and negative, just like we would expect from the Ramachandran plot Remember that typical beta sheets have phi angles of between negative 90 degrees and negative 170 degrees. Returning to pi mol, let's look at one thing that's very important to remember as we find phi and psi angles and as we draw the Newman projections for them. It's very important to remember to position the backbone so that the part of the backbone that's pointing towards us is also pointing up at zero degrees. So Notice that this part of the backbone, the one that's in the foreground, is pointing up. 
Positioning the Newman projection in a different way, for example, upside down, will also give us a correct angle, but it might be harder for us to interpret because the Newman projection won't be written in a standard way. So always, rem always remember to position the backbone that's pointing towards us, always point that backbone up as well to zero degrees. All right, now that we've found our phi angle, let's go ahead and find our psi angle of this beta sheet alpha carbon. To do that, we're gonna view the alpha carbon through this carbonyl carbon, and again, we're going to position the backbone that's pointing towards us, we're going to point that backbone up. So we're simply going to rotate the peptide like this so that the portion of the peptide that is pointing towards us is also pointing up to zero degrees. And that will allow us to view psi. Notice that this angle is large and positive, just like we would expect from the Ramachandran plot. Make sure that you ray trace and save the images of the phi and psi angles that we just found so that you can submit them with your assignment. We'll now complete the same procedure of finding phi and psi angles of an alpha carbon, but this time on an alpha helical alpha carbon. To do that, let's zoom out and change our selecting state to molecules to show the cartoon of the entire molecule. We're doing this so we can find the alpha helix again. Let's go and rotate the molecule so we can see that alpha helix at the C terminus. And then change our selecting state to residues so that we can find three amino acid residues to focus on. Remember, we always need three amino acids of a peptide in order to find a phi or a psi angle. We can actually highlight from the sequence or from the structure, but let's just click on part of the alpha helix structure. That is the R here. We'll click on the T and the E. So that gives us our tripeptide we need. And just as before, we're going to highlight everything except for that tripeptide so that we can, we can uh, hide it. And now we have a small part of the alpha helix isolated so that we can check out its phi and psi angles. Scroll back over to the tripeptide and then highlight the three amino acids and we'll show its sticks and we'll show its spheres. All right, now we're ready to find phi and psi angles for this part of the alpha helix. Let's start off by highlighting our central alpha carbon. We're gonna do that by selecting our state to atoms and click on that central threonine alpha carbon. Change the color to green. Always make sure that you highlight the central alpha carbon, not the flanking ones, okay? If you highlight the flanking ones, you're actually not gonna be able to find any dihedral angles. You need enough atoms uh, and bonds on both sides of the alpha carbon in order for this to work. All right, and the other thing that we're gonna do to prepare is we're gonna change our selecting state to residues, and we're going to delete the side chains from the flanking residues because they're a bit distracting. Now we just have a focus on our central amino acid. I always like to find the phi angle first, so remember to do that. We're going to view the alpha carbon through the nitrogen. All right, so just tilt the molecule so that we're viewing the alpha carbon through the nitrogen and always make sure that you point the backbone that's facing you, point that backbone up to zero degrees. That's how you know you'll always find the correct form of the Newman projection. Notice we have a very small and negative phi angle. This is always indicative of the alpha helix according to the Ramachandran plot. You can also notice that the side chain of this alpha carbon points down. This is indicative of the alpha helix. And finally, let's determine the psi angle of the alpha carbon of an alpha helix. Remember to do that, we're going to view the alpha carbon through the carbonyl carbon that's adjacent to it. Rotate the structure so that the carbonyl carbon is eclipsing the alpha carbon, just like that. Notice that the backbone that's facing us is also pointing up to zero degrees. That's what we need to make the correct Newman projection. And notice the alpha carbon eclipsed by the carbonyl carbon. 
compare it to the Newman projection, we see that we have the small and negative psi angle, and we have the R group pointing to the right, which is what we expect. Notice that in the Ramachandran plot, both the phi and the psi angles are small angles, and the phi and psi angles of the beta sheet are large angles. This is the main way of telling the difference between the two secondary structures. I hope this assignment gave you a better idea of how dihedral angles connect with protein secondary structure. Remember that the hydrogen bonding patterns of either the alpha helix or the beta sheet are what cause these dihedral angles. To get full credit for this assignment, make sure that you include ray traced images of the phi and psi angles of the beta sheet and also the phi and psi angles of the alpha helix for a total of four pictures. And of course, this lesson is just the beginning for you to understand the geometry of the peptide backbone. Hopefully in the future you can explore other parts of the structure for a better understanding of protein folding.